Uh, great everyone. So welcome back. I think we are live. Yes. Hello everyone, drop a yes or hi when you have joined so that I'm aware that we are here. We will wait a couple of more minutes and then we will begin with this. If uh, any doubts are there in previous classes or anything, let me know. Okay. Good morning, Praveen. Hi Nidhi, good morning. So everyone else, just let me know if uh, you're able to hear me. So also let me know if the setup is full fine. So we will begin in just two, three more minutes. Uh, let others also join so that, you know, we are no one missing out because today's session we have to cover lots of things. Uh, but I have created some nice, I would say, notebooks for all of you today. So it will be learning would be a very good, like very easy and a breeze. Okay. So this is the one. Hi Kunal. Good morning. Yeah. <coughs> Kevin, can you let me know meanwhile, those who have joined, if the whole setup is fine? Uh, like you should be able to hear me. Yes, data science interview class. Uh, Kunal, that should be starting, I think, on 21st. So you will get that communication. Okay. If you're talking about the batch which I'm taking, uh, I think you will get the communication for that. So it should be fine. Okay. I hope that's fine, Kunal. <coughs> <clears throat> Everyone else who have joined, can you please let me know if the whole setup is fine? So my audio should be clear. Uh, the voice video should be fine uh, towards the right end of your screen. And uh, like you should be able to see my screen and let me say if anyone thing I'm drawing on it. And we should be beginning in just around a minute. So let me have the paint tool here. Let's get rid of this. Yeah. Great. Thanks a lot, Kunal. <clears throat> uh, yes, Kunal, so I think it was supposed to start from 13th, but we were getting few more enrollments and those students were saying that uh, to push it basically, maybe because they have to uh, set some things up. So in interest of the majority, it was actually pushed. Okay, but don't worry. Uh, I assure you, uh, will not be like any news or anything will not be there. Okay, Kunal. Good morning, Ravi Kumar. <clears throat> so everyone, uh, let us begin then. Uh, please just a final check. I hope everything is fine with respect to the setup. If anything is not clear or anything, just let me know. Okay. Can I get a final confirmation, everyone? Can 
Can someone please confirm me if everything is fine? Great. Thanks a lot, Nidhi. So let us start with today's class. Uh, we will be actually, we have to do a couple of things today. Okay. So the very first thing we saw about the introduction to data science libraries, then we saw about NumPy arrays in detail, then Pandas array. So today we actually want to do <coughs> Matplotlib library. Uh, normally it's a uh, our topic. So I will suggest that after we complete this, I have a very good case study prepared for you all, which we can also do in the today's class only because no need of, uh, and this is stretching the class. If everything is fine, if you are able to understand, then we will begin with uh, the case study as well. It will be an easy case study on Titanic dataset, and we should be able to do it. Okay, everyone. So that case study will demonstrate that how the libraries which we have learned, right? So major three libraries are there, which we have learned, NumPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. Now there's another library, okay, which is the scikit-learn, which you'll be seeing here. Now the thing with scikit-learn is that scikit-learn as a library, okay, it is just the implementation of what we learn of machine learning algorithms and everything, right? ML algorithms. So in a way that is just something which is there to help you, but NumPy, Pandas and Matplotlib, they are a new concept overall. Okay. So I will show you that how we can use scikit-learn directly, okay, using the case study, but there is nothing like to... I would say unnecessarily make it complex and uh, learn that. If anyone has an issue, please let me know and we'll cover that also separately. Okay. Great, everyone. Then let us begin quickly. So, Matplotlib libraries, uh, machine learning. Why is it when something happens, it is always U3. And yes, these three are actually the libraries which are of most important for us because they make us, I would say, reach out to a place where we can apply machine learning algorithms. Okay. So, the core of machine learning actually lies in these three libraries only, everyone. So, if anyone masters these libraries, then he or she should be very good to just uh, have a good, very, I would say, great uh, career in machine learning because these are the three libraries which make it one to apply machine learning in Okay, everyone. So a little bit about me quickly. So I'm Mayank Agarwal, uh, your host and educator. So I'm a machine learning engineer or educator here at Aniron. Previously, I have worked at Goldman Sachs, Mindical, Oyo Rooms. I'm a graduate of NSIT and I have also a mentoring experience of four plus years. Okay, I've mentored through various platforms, scalar coding does and everything. You can check out my LinkedIn profile and connect with me there for more details. Please feel free to drop me a text. Let me know how the classes are going or if any other topic is there which you want me to cover in the future community class. Okay, everyone. Uh, the next is how to get certificate while you learn. So YouTube channel I need on is for live classes. Okay, let me quickly show you. So right now you will be taking classes from here okay so this is the class which you all will be taking so this is the matplotlib library class okay everyone so live classes should be taken from here and along with this you have to make sure that you go to the ineuron website ineuron.ai okay just we just log in pretty quick yeah great so if you will go and explore courses then let's say Data science library, here it is. Okay. If you go on this course, let me share the link with you all of you as well. Okay. So you can enroll in this course, which is highly suggested. Like I have already enrolled. I think I've showed the same in the first class. Then you can go to the course. So there are just all the things related. So one week, English, 11 a.m. Then if you will go to the course, you will see all the recordings. You will see all the recordings. Uh, one second. Yeah. So data science libraries. In your dashboard, basically, you will be seeing this uh, courses. You will see all the recordings as well as the assignments and quizzes, everything. So highly suggested that you take the class from here. Once you take the class from here, then I would say that you will be able to get a certificate once you complete all the things that is quizzes and assignment and quizzes and assignment also give you a very good, I would say, place where you can check out your understanding. If anything is not clear, please feel free to understand that as well. Okay. Uh, just do a Google search, the base which I have helped you create, that should be pretty good to, you know, help you understand all the other things as well. So I hope this thing is clear. This is covered in actually almost all the classes. So now let us move forward. Uh, I knew on website also have covered. I just let me write complete quizzes to get certificate. 
Okay, and of course, certificate is very important and will be very useful to to you all. So please make sure that you are kind of learning and basically enrolling on the Union website. Then Matplotlib, so visualization with Python. So till now we have seen how we can do data analysis and basically play around with our Python on the data. Matplotlib now is for visualization. So this is the official website of Matplotlib. Okay, it is a library in Python. So it helps you basically create great level of i would say charts to understand your data better as they say a picture is worth a thousand words so in data science as well because we are getting insights from the data it makes a lot of sense that we have a great picture or a great representation of what our data is trying to say okay to get that great representation it's very good i would say that you have a particular image to showcase something okay in the last class which i took of uh, your data science projects Okay, we saw lots of graph, lots of complex, uh, basically data points, which were very clear when we were making graphs, okay, as respect to the data. Now, see if something is basically increasing like this or some of the graphs, now these graphs, Matplotlib helps you to uh, create. Okay, everyone. So it's a very powerful library. Again, make sure that you understand it properly. I will give you a very good introduction. Like I even struggled with Matplotlib in the very starting. Because I was not aware, like I was searching that, okay, how to create it, what is subplot, what legends, all these things. So I have made sure to cover all of these. Okay, everyone. So let me know if everything is clear and are we good to begin. Just drop me a yes in the chat, everyone, if we are good to begin. And anytime anyone has an issue or anything is not clear, please make sure that you are asking that in the chat and we'll help you to hear that. Okay, everyone. Let me just select my thanks, Nidhi. So yeah, great. So the very first thing is Matplotlib is an amazing visualization library in Python for 2D plots of arrays. Okay, so for 2D plots, Matplotlib is an amazing visualization library, which we all use. This is a multi-platform data visualization library built on NumPy Ares. As I told you in the very starting, when NumPy Ares kind of made data science possible in your Python. So Matplotlib is created on top of NumPy Ares. Uh, your Pandas we saw yesterday is created on top of NumPy Ares. All these libraries, okay, all of that which we are work, which we are learning, they are kind of helpful in and basically created on top of NumPy Ares. Designed to work with broader SkyPy stack. So SkyPy Scientific Python is also another library. A little bit advanced, but we should be good to understand the same once we understand these basic libraries. Greatest benefit of visualization allows us visual huge amount of data in easily digestible visuals, which kind of makes sense. If I'm giving you 1000 rows, if I'm giving you 1000 rows and I ask you that, hey, what is the trend? Okay, you will be like, sir, I'm not able to get, okay, what exactly is the trend? But on the same side, if I'm making a graph like this to you all, you will all be like, yes, okay, we can see that it is increasing. The data seems to be increasing with respect to time or let's say, any other uh, variable which is dependent on. Okay. So, Matplotlib consists of several plots like line, bar, scatter, histogram, etc. Okay, everyone. So, I hope the basic introduction should be clear now. So, just use to create visualization, and visualization is helpful to understand a lot of things. Okay. So, now let us quickly go to our notebook. Uh, one second. So let us create a new notebook here. I have, so to use matplotlib, we use import matplotlib as MLT. Okay, sorry, PLT, my bad. Matplotlib, import pyplot, and basically we import Python plot, which is a subclass in this, pyplot as PLT. Okay, everyone. So this is how we normally import, or you can do import matplotlib pyplot as PLT. So both things work. Okay, here you will also see. Now, there is one uh, very important thing, matplotlib inline. So, purpose of matplotlib inline, this is something which we also draw. Okay, matplotlib inline. Okay, so you will see it is a magic function in Python. Okay, it helps, basically it will show you the graphs as it is. So, if you don't like this, let's say the graph basically which is coming like this. Okay. In a separate in a separate window or something, then for that matplotlib is used. This is a very important interview question, everyone. Please make sure that you understand the same. Okay. So this is also something which I will include in both the libraries. Uh, sorry, in both the 
class. So the other one, I will give it, give it to you. We will quickly run through it once you understand that. Okay, and one by one, we will understand everything from it. Okay, so this is how things are done, everyone. I will just write this matplotlib in line so that you understand and uh, uh, basically remember this thing. This is a very important interview question that why matplotlib in line is written. What is the use case or benefit of writing this? Okay, everyone. If you don't write it, then your graphs will basically open like in a different, I would say, windows, which we basically avoid, try to avoid. Okay. You appear to be stored within the notebook. Okay, everyone. So everywhere we are, where we are using matplotlib, normally it is suggested that we use this matplotlib inline so that we don't get different windows for our different, uh, let's say, graphs. So let us now move forward. Matplotlib comes with a wide variety of plots. We will see these plots. Plots help us to understand trends, pattern, and to make correlations. They are typically instrumental for reasoning about quantitative information. So lots of quantity we have of information, how to basically, you know, give some words or understand that. That is where matplotlib is used. So, so first of all, let us understand about the light, line plot everyone. We will quickly just draw one line plot. So we have already imported this thing, line plot. Okay, let us quickly see then. So x, let's say take some values. Uh, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let us take x as this. Y, let us take, let's say 10, 5, 2, 4, 6, 3. Okay, so till now even I think the function how x is changing with respect to y or sorry how y is changing with respect to x will not be clear but see so this is function to plot function to plot and this is function to show the plot okay everyone so plt dot show and see a line graph is created in front of you everyone so Line graph is just a graph like this, basically where the line is there. So which can help you to understand the trends and all these things. Helpful in understanding the trend. I will just show you how we basically build the same. So we have this PLT imported. We want X and Y, this plot function. Okay, plot Y versus X. So this R basically... Uh, Assume that you will give him x and y. Okay. Then other things are basically scale and scaling and all these things that if you want to add some scale or something into that. Okay. And then few other things which we can use to change or let's say add uh, more information or something else to our graph. But we will see that as it becomes more complex. Okay, everyone. I hope this is clear. Yes or no, everyone? The line plot. Just let me know if any doubt is there, everyone. Uh, will surely help you to clear that. So the next one is your bar plot. Again, pretty straightforward. Uh, like what we can do is plt dot bar. So it is very important to first understand the basic function and plt dot show. And see, we have a bar plot with all of us. Yes or no, everyone? So bar plot, though, I think we all have studied in our high school as well. With respect to a particular value, how many of these buildings, how tall is our buildings, that will basically tell us the frequency. Now, if we see this data here, we are like, okay, for 110 is there, then 6, okay, that is the highest. But see, from graph, how easy is it, right, everyone? So from graph, we know that, okay, at 1, this is the highest. Then let's say at 4, this is next, then like this, this, this. So we can see the graph, uh, see the overall pattern as well. Okay, everyone, which was not that clear from your, I would say from using your uh, normal data. And this so we are even taking the data which is very random, which we have taken just five data points. Now think what will happen if we have lots of data points and that application we will see in our case study. Okay, everyone. So next one is your histogram. Second, yeah. Next one is your histogram. <coughs> so let us make one thing everyone so we have plt already uh, let us take plt dot hist y and see so histogram is actually on a continuous range okay everyone so let us just let me do plt dot show here as well it will show the graph properly so see everyone if we are not providing that then lots of other information is also coming 
but if you provide an histogram what always expects so it expects just your this thing and what should be the range like continuous value okay bins range all these things it expects okay what should be the color of your graph all these things it is and one more thing to understand any graph a little better let's say histogram mat plot lip okay so see mat plot lip pipe plot hist that is the function which we are using as well plt dot hist our plt is mat plot lip pipe plot so we import this subclass yes or no everyone so we are importing the subclass now here is the full definition full understanding that you will see lots of uh, i would say parameters of course you don't have to work or understand every parameter but it is uh, suggested you need this documentation one so that you have an idea on the same okay so these are the examples basically which they have created how to draw histogram with matplotlib so histogram they generate data okay so here you will see it has taken a lots of point okay then 20 bins it has taken okay everyone so by random we can also basically generate these things then histogram colors how you can update that then 2d histogram like this basically from the top how we can see that so there are lots of i would say ways through which we can show our data you have to just understand that which data which flow or which i would say overall uh, graph is helping you to understand your data better if your data is continuous if your data is continuous then of course it will be better if you if you show that data with a histogram but if it is discrete if it is discrete let's say if i have to see male and female things then i think it is better if you show via bar plot okay everyone i hope this thing is clear as well and for everything documentation is your uh, best helper okay you don't need to remember anything but you have to understand that how to read documentation okay so one thing which i can quickly show you all is let's say we are seeing these things okay let us try to make some bins here as well let's say if i make bins is equals to 5 so it is making 5 bins here let's me make it 10 so you will see like it is basically dividing on top of that if i make it just 2 it will just consider and basically club all the values okay everyone so that is another i would say where this parameter which you can pass okay then plt dot sub plots this is how uh, your 2d histogram is getting plotted then tight layout true let us pass this as well to see how it will change our graph so normally the best way to learn everyone is to make sure okay it is giving you tangle set what is expected okay i think this is uh my bad okay just let me see it quickly okay sub plot sorry it is using sub plot library we will see that should be fine uh so the way we are able to see this too right so this is how sub plot get happens and if we let's say create a so see here everyone if we are creating uh random data okay let's say this dist one okay rng is a function now we are creating random data standardized normal data we have to import rng so okay yeah this is the numpy random so if you will see this is what rng is defined okay and we have to import numpy as well we should never forget to import numpy import numpy as np okay everyone so i have imported numpy as well now so see test one this is the data okay this is continuous data now what i can do directly just plt dot hist this data and plt dot show and i'm seeing this data in front of me then i can of course pass other things as well the weight has been passed here Okay, this ten bins is equals to n bins, so twenty bins. Let us make it twenty bins, and this data will then be a lot spread out. Uh, what's the definition name? Once again, it is always beneficial to see. Okay, it's just bins. Okay. Then of course you can change the colors and everything. So that is just decorating your, uh, I would say, graph. That is uh, not a problem. I hope. you can just add few densities equals to true and other things so that will just decorate it further density will just assume the density as well here and the data data is being normalized here okay everyone so i hope this thing is clear now so just decoration is there let us move to the next plot the next is your scatter plot 
Okay. So scatter plot, can anyone tell me where it is used? Everyone? Where is your scatter plot used? PLT dot scatter x comma y. And then again PLT dot show. See. So scatter plot is used a lot, everyone, in your correlation to finding out correlation. Yes or no? So used to find correlation. Okay, everyone. So we will see the same in your uh, case study as well that how we can use the same. Now I can show you here as well scatter plot. Now, see, this is the kind of scatter plot which we get. Now, this is a positive correlation. Okay, let us make correlation coefficient like basically based on correlation coefficient. See, I think this one is better. See, when r is equal to plus one, both x and y are increasing. So, scatter plot helps us to see that. Then r is equal to minus one. This is the case. Then, if r is equal to zero, they will be random. Here also you can see that there is no much change in x and y. So scatter plot also you should be aware that how to read scatter plot as well. Okay, everyone. And you will see in the library which I have created for all of you in this sorry example which I have created for all of you. So matplotlib in line. Now here lin space. If you remember lin space, I told you now from zero to hundred. Okay, in the numpy libraries, everyone did we study about this lin space function? Yes or no? Lin space function where I told you that it will be generating. Uh, basically <coughs> equivalent points from 0 to 10 and it will be a lot useful in basically plotting graphs. Now see, np dot sin x, okay, then plot x, y, then this title x table variable are legends which you will read about. So pretty easy, like you can add a title to your overall graph, then x axis and y axis you can also label, okay, everyone. So this is how you can see the graph, see this thing. Similarly, histogram, random, Okay, random number, 1000 data points, then data, bins 30, and edge color, we are saying that, okay, edge color should be black. So this is also some way, here you won't see any edge color, but if I pass this document, see, it has created edges now. So this edge, then legends we are added, so these are legends, yes or no everyone, legends, and we are able to see these things. Then bar plot, for discrete data, as I asked you, that discrete data. A, B, C, D, E, they are not related to each other or is not continuous. For example, age is continuous, 10 to 20, then let's say you can make 20 to 30. But if you are, uh, let's say male or female, that is not continuous, male, female, that I've already covered in my data science masterclass. So just see that. And similarly, if you are plotting it, see, bar plot value category. Then again, scatter plot, just random points. And this seems to be, I think, a random, uh, no coefficient of correlation between them. This is just a random, uh, I would say, relation between them. So everyone, I hope this four basic types of graphs are clear. Can anyone give me a confirmation? Yes or no? Everyone, can you let me know if any doubt is there or I'll be good to move forward. Just take, just see all these graphs which we have created. Very basic graphs. What is the function? How they are created? Then what are the values which you are dependent on? Let me know if anything is not clear. Let me know. So we have just studied very basic four types of graph, a very basic introduction to bar, uh, matplotlib, line plot, bar plot, histogram, and scatter plot. We have seen two to two, two to three examples of all of them. We have understood that how they are defined inside, I would say, or uh, this uh, matplotlib library, how you can decorate them, how you can understand more on them just by understanding the documentation. Okay, so if anyone has any doubt, let me know. Next, we are going to start with subplot. Okay, 
so see the thing is that you should understand that which there should be two things which should be clear to your uh, you when you are using matplotlib okay we can pay attention first is first and other very important is your overall data okay how many data points are there what all data is saying second is second is which graph you believe can help you make sense of data okay everyone now to understand this thing the way you have to understand this is by seeing lots of codes lots of other people like let's say you can see information on kegel okay try to make graphs try to make graphs like for example if i want to find correlation if i want to find correlation then of course bar plot or histogram plot will not be that useful but scatter plot is the thing which i want to go with okay similarly if i want to see the trend or time series data then line uh, line graph is something which you should be aiming towards similarly matplotlib has lots and actually lots of these graphs okay matplotlib so i showed the same in the case study as well that they you can make multiple types of graphs to show the same showcase the same level of data and and you should see that okay which data is helping you to understand your which graph is helping you to understand your data better because as i've already showed you that in your matplotlib see there are lots of this uh, plot types okay so these are all your basic plot types then statistical distribution histogram is there box plot is there all these are there then grid data but most of them we don't use normally okay and 3d is also being supported recently so mlpl toolkit simplot 3d is some library okay so you can download this example in python source code or as a jupyter notebook okay so the thing is that which you have to understand is that what exactly is helping you to explain your data better so all these are the graph which we have available with us you can see anything by going into its definition okay let's say if we go on the pair wise data let's say if i go on scatter then you can see scatter there are few examples which they have created you can download this as well but should be fine you can just copy and make them but it is very important to understand that what exactly is explaining your data better to you okay everyone so let us now move forward next is subplot so matplotlib allows to easily create multiple plots on the same figure using the subplot method this subplot method takes in three parameters number of rows number of columns and plot numbers okay so which plot number is it so using subplot we can create two plots on the same canvas so it's not like we have to create multi different level i would say plots everyone it's better like if we can use uh, basically create a plot so let me show you with an example only so let us go to our notebook where we are practicing plt dot subplot let's say one two one see so it has created one subplot as of now so what was the uh, number of rows number of columns and let us now plot some things in this plt dot plot okay plt dot plot uh let's say x comma y we are plotting x comma y in first one plt dot subplot now see first okay second and second image so this is first one two and second image then plt dot plot uh, plt dot let's say bar x comma y see everyone and i should actually do plt dot show that would be better yeah see everyone so the graphs which we are generating independently first now we are able to generate in together so how you do this how you basically use it that you make let's say if you have to show nine graphs so you will do plt dot subplot one comma nine okay uh, i think it has to give you three arguments yes one to nine you have to give these arguments okay so actually it, we have given two things here so it won't take it okay and then you have to just make sure that in a loop or somehow you are making sure that you are providing this argument on which graph you want to see so let me show you one thing here as well everyone plt dot subplot okay 1 comma 9 let's say i write a loop for i in range 9 okay plt dot uh, 
सब प्लॉट आई प्लस वन एंड पी एल टी डॉट बार से एक्स फॉर्म ऑफ आई ओके एंड इन दी एंड आई कैन जस्ट डू पी एल टी डॉट शो नाउ सी आई मे टू सी लाइक नाइन ग्राफ वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन नाइन फॉर्स दे आर लाइक अ लॉट आई वुड से एडिट सो वी हैव टू मेक श्योर दैट वी आर डूइंग समथिंग लाइक दिस थ्री कॉमा थ्री नाउ दे आर बेटर बिकॉज दे आर थ्री रोज थ्री कॉलम्स ओके एवरी वन so number of rows number of column and then i plus 1 i am asking for all the graphs so this is how you can create multiple of your diagrams multiple diagrams in a single uh, image okay everyone so this subplot method is also a lot useful everyone do anyone has any doubt in this thing let us show understand this with this thing as well so you will see subplot figure axis okay so there is one object related approach as well so if people are aware of oops we create a object of our plt dot figure okay so this normally is shown that this is the best way to basically create a graph so i will show you this as well okay plt dot figure so the idea is to if we create figure object and call methods of it okay so let's say we have created this figure object okay and now we need to add the axis uh, once again we can use there as well object based so matplotlib provides an object oriented interface for plotting This approach gives more control and customization options. So see, plt dot figure, then adding axis to the figure, plt figure dot add axis, then plotting on the axis x y. All this we have done. So see, kind of a very, uh, I would say rough graph, but yes, we are able to then make better use of this thing. From zero to one, we want this. From zero to one, we want this. So this is how plt dot this is used. Okay. One more thing uh, which should be clear, uh, we can. so this axis is actually like this if we do figure dot add underscore axis uh, this just takes in th uh, this like this left bottom width and height okay everyone so this is how this axis takes in the information so if you go here add axis okay and this is what i'm telling you so there will be lots of i would say uh, these arguments but we have to understand that what exactly or how, in what uh, basically uh, way it is taking the argument so it is this left bottom width and height okay everyone so let us take one more example of this so let me just show you this step by step now figure dot add underscore axis let's say 0.1 not like this 0.1 then 0.2 then 0.8 and then 0.9 and let us make this ax okay let me have one second this is as well here the third object is not uh, scriptable let me just quickly see why we are getting this error so we have plt dot figure as this and figure okay, everyone let us just quickly understand why is this showing this error axis a uh, figure dot add axis i think either we have to show this thing so let us quickly understand this error okay i think we have just uh, made some issue in this thing okay my bad everyone so this is actually a list and yeah we are actually not using it as a function you'll see everyone I hope this is clear, everyone. Yes or no? So now moving forward, okay. Now we can do things like this. Let's say a x dot plot, and let's say x y, okay. And we can add color, let's say as well, purple, let's say, and see. This is adding your graph in this thing. And I can do one more thing as well. A x dot bar, okay, without any color. and see so now we have combined two graphs see how good is it right yes or no everyone so now we should be able to see or i would say able to combine multiple graphs and we should be able to see patterns or trends between multiple data points Yes or no, everyone? See how benefit beneficial it is that now inside just this thing, you can create multiple of your 
uh, graph all together uh, basically one over the another, which will tell you that what is the pattern and what exactly is happening. Everyone, I hope this thing is clear as well. Can I get a yes or no? So we have seen the approach using object. Okay. So subplot example we have also seen actually. And we have seen figure in figure as well that how we can have multiple figures here. Okay. Let me show you one also very good example. So what you can do is, let me just copy this thing. So what you can do here as well is, like, let's say we can have figure in figure basically with respect to axis as well. So see, we can have second axis. Okay, which let's say we are taking like this. Five and five. And in axis one, I'm adding this. In axis two, I'm adding the plot, let's say y comma x. And I'm doing this, let's say red. See everyone. So let's say you're on top of the graph. Of course, this uh, is not in the right way. So let me do it one thing. Point 0.1, point 0.1. One. 0.8 and then what I can do is 0.2 then 0.5 okay this I have to reduce or decrease 0.4 and 0.3 okay everyone now see basically you have a graph in top of graph which you can now showcase the value let's say this thing if we move a little bit to the right side then we should be able to see that okay how the trends basically happens how everything is happening so your uh, this object uh, object related approach and subplot method this is basically helping you so that you can make multiple of these things everyone i hope this thing is clear yes or no can anyone tell me if this thing is clear any doubt is there Everyone, can I get a yes or no if everything is clear? Let me know if anything is not clear. So now let us see uh, your DPA and expectation is something which I have to show you all as well. Uh, one thing before I move forward, so I can, what I can do is, uh, before I move forward, oh, just one second everyone, yeah, so you can do this as well, figure, and you can do axis, okay, and then plt dot the plots, okay, three, uh, basically you have to now specify that n rows is equal to three, and then call is equal to three, and you will see nine of these graphs, right, and then you can add basically multiple graphs on top of it. Okay. So now what you can also do here is see everyone. So let's say figure, we have seen that, okay, this is object related approach figure. Then you can add, let's say figure size. Okay. Let's say this is zero comma two and you can add DPI as well. Okay. So expectation, all these things. So DPI, if you will see. The resolution of the figure in dots per inch. So you this you must have seen, I think, everyone uh, in your images or if you have ever worked with JPEG images, there we have the DPI or in printing, right? So we have this uh, this thing. Then we can do X is equals to PLT. Sorry, uh, figure. Let me copy it from here. Like normal thing which you were doing. So we can now add Xs here. And then X dot plot X comma Y. So to make... Uh, one second. I think I have to just zero comma two, and then okay. I think I have to just uh, downgrade the library version here. So I was working on a project for you all. So that is where I saw this thing. Uh, one second, everyone. So let me make it or say zero. Zero, one, one. X and Y. What are these X and Y which we have? So we are able to basically make it larger and everything. We have added our X's. Okay. So let us take. 
let me try to add dpi here only so plot dot figure if i add dpi is equal to say 100 so it is now pixelated a little let's say if i add it 50 plots then okay you will see that it is getting smaller okay everyone so if you have to generate a picture which is of high quality let's say if you want to save it okay if you want to ex uh, export it somewhere then it it is basically helpful if the picture quality is good yes or no everyone so for that dpi is uh, basically and i would say argument which you should use and we can do let's say figure fix size and this only if we change this uh, 0 comma 2 okay i think yeah this fix size is something which is causing the issue so yeah if i take it 1 comma 2 then i think it has created it like this uh, so if we Let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah, so now it is uh, working. So zero actually it is uh, kind of just going on that only. So let me make it 500, which is kind of a very good, I would say, resolution. You should be able to use this thing outside by exporting it. Now to export a particular thing, now export a particular graph, which is the next thing. Okay, there is a line so figure dot save fig so let's say if you have uh, something which you want to showcase in in some document or basically showcase to your team okay let's say line dot png so you can save it like this so let us see uh, let me run it again yeah see everyone so line dot png we got yes or no so this is how you can get and in save figure we have multiple things okay figure name then what all basically DPI format, okay, metadata, what all metadata we want, then inches, all these things are there, which we can uh, kind of change. Okay, everyone. I hope everyone this thing is clear as well. So DPI and expect ratio. So the next topic is your saving figure. This is basically I've shown you already PLT dot save figure. Okay figure name this i have already shown the dpi okay higher dpi implies better quality okay everyone higher dpi implies better quality so if anyone has any doubt in this let me know if anyone has any doubt in this uh, let me know we have seen all the basic functionality i would say of your uh this matplotlib library which is normally the very good starting point so now the overall understanding would be that okay we will basically try to test out that what all exactly happens okay uh next is actually legend which i have shown you but let us use that again okay so let me try to use and show you those legends again so in this you are seeing let us see this uh we can add like this plt.title x label y label and if we show this plt.legend okay we can add this label here as well so you can see here uh plt dot plot uh, let me make it let me remove this so that this is normally better not zoom in okay now let's say if uh, this is my plot then I am adding a label, okay, X versus Y. Now see, you are not able to see this X versus Y as of now. But if I do, let's say, AX dot legend also here, then see, you are able to see this X versus Y. Yes or no, everyone? Then let us try to do one more thing. Plot X, let's say, star star 2. So I am plotting this thing x versus y squared now see uh, okay my bad i think list an integer uh, y plus i would say 3 is to integer one second everyone so y is actually our list here then i can actually create y2 which is equals to y star star 2 So let us do it like this. 
y star ten. Okay. Okay, okay, it is basically getting my bad. So this is so what the error is coming is that yeah, it is basically getting multiplied like this. So you can see this is basically same. Let me just try to do one thing x plus four. Uh, once again, square. Either I can write a function every element of in list Python. So let us see how we can square this directly. Is there any better way instead of writing a function? Yes, so we let us use this list comprehension. That is also a little good thing. Okay, very much. So I two for I n y. So see everyone what I've done. Uh, this actually this is a list where this is a list where what is happening is that all of these uh, values, all of these values of y, which was uh, let me show you why. Okay, and let me show you what this does. So this is this comprehension format. Okay, so it is querying all these values. So now for one, it was ten earlier. Now it is hundred. But to basically, if I don't add this legend, okay, let us remove this legend now. You will not be able to make sense that okay, what exactly is happening where? See. No artist with label found to put in legend. So legend it is saying that no the artist whose label start with an underscore or ignored when legend is called should be fine. So we're not sure that okay, if this is the square, if this is the square, what is the case? But if we add these legends, now see how easy is it? X versus Y, X versus Y square. And then similarly, we can add this labels and all these things as well. So title, label, and all these things, which kind of makes our graph, which kind of makes our graph a lot readable. So line plot, y axis, x axis. X versus Y, X versus Y squared. We can just remove this DPI. Will be a little less clear, but yeah. Okay, everyone. So these are all the basic things uh, which happened in your uh, histogram. So we have covered histogram, uh, sorry, in your matplotlib, line plot, scatter plot, bar graph. We have covered about the object related approach, about the legends, how to save our graphs, and as well how to basically have them in a, uh, I would say, better format. Now then there are other libraries as well, Plotly, Seaborn, and Matroid are replacement for each other. So the overall use case of all these libraries, everyone is the same only. That is, they are used to create graphs. Okay, so Plotly and Seaborn are few more, I would say, libraries which are used for the same use case. You can see here. So if you understand one of them properly, then it should be fine. Okay, everyone. So see, Seaborn, statistical data visualization. Then similarly, Plotly is also there. Low code app deployment, like basically, okay, this is something else, Plotly Python. Okay, so basic charts. See, scatter plots, bar charts, line charts, same things, more or less. Okay, pie charts, all these things are there. It is just adding, I would say, more movement and motion to it. So kind of interactive. But the overall understanding is that you should be able to make your graph from your data. Okay, everyone. So let me show you this as well. So object-based approach and legends we have already seen. Now let us see another notebook which I have created for you all. So let us save this. Now see, matplotlib and there we have to add matplotlib inline. Okay. Now line plot. Just basically we can add grid as well. Plot grid. See everyone here. So if I add this plot grid, now you will be seeing this grid as well. To actually understand that what value is there at what point okay so we generated 100 data points so here i've made sure and i've done the effort to explain everything so i will share these notebooks with you here you will see that what exactly is happening while you are generating this thing okay then generating this histogram using this plot method grid method and all these things then random values what exactly we are doing similarly bar plot okay everyone then scatter plot then your subplot see how many subplots I have created here? Lin space we have done one and sign and cos we have taken and see. So we have created so good of a graphs. Yes or no, everyone? So you will be getting all these. Uh, I have uh, basically written the code for all these uh, notebooks. Okay, then I have explained each of this as well. So that when you revise, when you revise, you are able to make full benefit of it. And to get these resources, you know that where, you, where what you have to do. So you have to enroll yourself on this iNeuron. And... 
this data science library. So let us go to this course. And I will show you from where you can get the resources. See everyone. So let's say if we go to NumPy, then there are the resources. Yes or no, everyone? So on, from here, you can download it. So please make sure that you are uh, basically enrolling in the course. Okay, then there are legends. So see, line plot with legends, sin x, cos x. Right, so you can even do co complex mathematical function and easily explain them. Yes or no, everyone, and np.sinx we are using. So I told you in the sin x, uh, sorry, in the NumPy class that how sin and cos will be used. And this is a very good starting point for your matplotlib library. I think you should refer to these two notebooks. Learn a hell lot of from them, try to experiment, and then move forward and make complex graph. So the biggest issue which people do, okay, with matplotlib or these libraries that they directly start with complex graph and they don't understand the basics. That, hey, why this plot is being used? Okay, why is this legend used? What are bins? Okay, then what is this object-related approach where we are defining this figure and axis? So if all these are clear to you, then other graphs will also be clear, uh, basically very nicely to all of you. Okay, everyone. So if anyone has any doubt, let me know in the chat. If no doubts are there, let me know and we should be good to start with a case study. So I've created a case study where we will be seeing the use case of each and every, uh, I would say library properly. Okay, everyone, just let me know. Just drop a yes. Thanks, Monkey. Any, anyone else? If any doubt is there, let me know. If no doubts are there, then we should be good and start with a case study. Great. So in the case study only, last uh, I will show you about the SkyKit Learn. So I've created a very proper library for SkyKit Learn, uh, notebook for SkyKit Learn use case as well. Okay, where I've explained about SkyKit Learn, but normally it is not that difficult to understand. First, let us understand the case study. So we'll be taking the Titanic data only. Okay, so here the whole Titanic data is there. See the full Titanic data which we downloaded yesterday. Okay, now the good thing is that. Uh, your d.csv can read directly from internet as well. So if you will see here, I just provided the direct format from internet. Okay, everyone. So exploring Titanic data set using NumPy. In this notebook, uh, so let me just uh, go here. So now we are actually starting with a case study because we have time. So I think it makes sense. Uh, that was all the basic thing which you need to cover in matplotlib. Uh, I don't think if you if I make you learn complex thing in the very starting, it will become a lot difficult. So now we are starting with case study. Okay, everyone, case study. <coughs> so we will see all the libraries which we have learned. That is NumPy. Then your pandas. Then matplotlib. And last, the library which I will explain you while using scikit-learn. Okay, everyone. So these are the things which we are going to cover. Then let us see this quickly. So we are getting the Titanic data. Now this Titanic dot head should be clear to you. This is already we have seen in your, uh, this thing in your, uh, pandas class. Okay. So this is the thing which we are getting passenger survive P class, all these things. Okay. I can get Titanic underscore data dot shape as well here. I think, yeah, sorry. Okay, so 891 is the shape. Uh, let us print and 12 columns are there. Yeah. So we should print this and let Jupyter Notebook uh, output the output aim for this. Okay, we'll see. Yeah. So 891 and 12 data pre-processing before performing any uh, any analysis that pre process the data by handling missing values and converting categorical categorical variable into numerical representation. So this is something which we also did in our uh, data science project class. So Titanic data fill in a for age. We are filling in with medium. Okay. And we are filling doing it in place. Then sex is the column which we are mapping to zero to one. And similarly embarked is a column S zero C one Q two. Okay. And see the full thing after uh, basically things have been changed. So earlier you had this embark SCS. Okay. You had this uh, male and female. Now we have changed it to numerical because that is normally easier. Okay. Now some basic information uh, operation on the data using NumPy. Okay. We have survivor status, Titanic data dot values. 
Okay, then calculate the average age of the passenger. So NP dot mean. We learned about these uh, functions. Yes or no, everyone? Mean, median, mod. That how we can use NumPy for that. Do you all remember? So in the very first class, in the very first uh, sorry, in the second class of NumPy. So we have this thing, no? This is the class. So we have the PPT as a whole, and then n-dimensional shape. All these things are there. Then operation on these things, arrange, age, all these things were there. And max, mean, see. So I have very, I would say, properly curated this case study so that it is in line with what all we have studied. See, there are multiple ways to understand something. So first, we learn the theory of something. Okay. So normally the thing that happens is that first we learn the theory. Based on that theory, we should do practice, which we are doing in the previous classes, which we have done. Now, for after this practice, we should normally complement this with a case study. But you have to understand one thing very properly that your case study should be related to what you have done in your theory and practice. It should not that the case study is totally different to these things. Okay, everyone. So please make sure that uh, I will be sharing these files with you. That you are going through with this case study because this case study I have created with your overall, I would say, uh, what I've taught you with that in line, uh, with that in mind. Okay, everyone. So let me create this, uh, remove all these things. If anyone has any doubt, let me know. If any doubt is there. Great. So just uh, ping me in the chat if any doubt is there. So let us move forward then. NP mean, you are seeing that age, not values. Then average age, okay. These values we have already got. And calculate the fair stat. So NP minimum, titanic data, fair dot values. NP mean, NP max. Now let us see these things. See, average age we are able to get. And fair statistics we are able to get. That, okay, what is the minimum fair? What is the maximum fair, mean fair and what is the maximum fair as well? Okay, everyone, we can do one thing here as well. Uh, let's say median fair, let us also get median fair. And this is a tuple, I think. So we just have to do np dot median. And we can just add this here. See, we are able to get the median fair as well. And there seems to be a lot of, I would say, so, are you aware that what happens when mean and median are not very near to each other? So, in this example, you will see that the mean is this and median is 14. So, it means that the minimum price is 0 for the ticket. So, Titanic data set is the very basic data set. You, all of you must have seen the Titanic movie. So, let's say in this uh, movie or in a real life, we have all the information. Okay, we have all the information of a particular passenger that okay what was his age what was his gender ticket he created he purchased then what class he was in so if you remember there were classes right so the way we have let's say standard room okay economy room and let's say deluxe or premium room similarly titanic also had these things okay so all this is present in the data so i think i've shown you that in last class when you were learning by pandas so i have used the same data set because of that so titanic data see everyone turn on this titanic data so passenger ID, if he survived or not, okay, passenger class, then what was his name, then see his uh, gender or sex, then age, okay, then see basically we have to understand what is it, then what part he was on, then ticket, okay, fare, what was the fare, then cabin, then embarked, did he embarked or not on the journey, so all these things are there. And we have to tell if the passenger, was, uh, if the particular uh, passenger survived the Titanic incident or not. Okay, so this is a very, I would say, famous case study on Kegel. So Kegel Titanic, if you will see. This is a very famous case study on Kegel. And the next step which you should do after taking this community class, I would suggest is to, uh, if you are a beginner, complete beginner in the world of data science, just try to attempt this case study. Okay, you will see lots of other things as well. Titanic machine learning from disaster. Predict survival on Titanic and get familiar with ML basics. So this is the very basic thing. Okay. In the data, you will see like, okay, what data is saying. So one of the CBSV number of siblings or spouse aboard the Titanic. Okay. Then we have this code. So see, people have also done their uh, part by adding all these things. Uh, different notebooks they have shared. 
now you are kind of aware of all the libraries which are used and if you will open any i would say notebook you will be able to see that these the only libraries which are the one which are being used and see numpy nt pandas okay oss some inbuilt library you can quickly learn about this and then see titanic read csv then eda exploratory data analysis the person is doing but don't you think that this is something which we have done titanic it is a panda data frame then group by so group by in pandas okay p class in aggregate this is aggregating and then we are applying some function so just i would say chaining of multiple functions which we have learned chaining of multiple methods and then we are able to see these things yes or no everyone so then see titanic hist so this histogram you will also see like uh, your overall pandas also give you some uh, basic very basic uh, this uh, visualization functionalities Okay, then age bin. So the heat is creating new. I would say new overall variable. This is how we also created that. PD dot cut, Titanic age, and this is how this uh, overall things is getting created. So see. Now once you have taken this class, uh, you are at a good position to understand these notebooks. You should try to understand the notebooks which you are able to, and you should be in a very good. I would say this will give a very good kickstart to your uh, data science or machine learning journey. Which of course is the prerequisite if you want to become something in the AI like today because AI is all the hype. If you want to start your career as a in artificial intelligence as well, this, this is something which you should be look for, forward to. Okay, everyone. So let us now see what <coughs> average age and everything we got. Then data manipulation. So selected data, Titanic data. We are able to basically select these values. Okay, and we are able to see the selected data shape. So let us see what is selected data. It is a numpy array. If I just get the type for you, see, it's a numpy array. Yes or no, everyone? So just let me know if this is clear. Then statistical analysis, survival rate, np dot mean, survival status. So let us see how many people survived. Thirty-eight percent was the survival rate, everyone. What does this mean? That if hundred people were there, thirty-eight survived out of that. So this we have taken by taking the mean of survival rate, which is zero one. Okay. So using numpy we were able to do very basic level of analysis okay we use numpy to analyze titanic data set containing information about passenger aboard the titanic we from various operation and calculation to gain insight from the data including handling missing values converting categorical data calculating average age fair statistics survival rate and more numpy is operation a mathematical function make it powerful tool for data analysis and manipulation now understand how you would have done this if let's say let me take so let's say survival rate okay so we would have taken this survival status survival data uh one second so i'm just showing that if we didn't have this thing let's say if we didn't have these functions in build then how difficult it would have been for all of us so this is the survival status okay survival status already is the values all these values so see how would have done this for i in survival status okay then i would have done let's say yes is equals to 0 no is equals to 0 if i equal equal 1 then i would have done yes equals to 1 else no plus equals 1 now this is how i would have got the total yes percentage survival status dot size something like this i have to done do Uh, i think yeah see but because of using numpy i am directly able to get the total value yes or no everyone i hope this is clear that how this is overall helping me how this np dot mean is overall helping me to avoid writing these kind of code so this is where numpy use case comes into picture so let us now move to the next notebook so i have created notebooks for you all which is basically now the next one is your pandas Okay, everyone. So, case study is showing Titanic data set using pandas. We will use pandas to analyze the Titanic data set, which contain information about passenger, the leverage, powerful like Python uh, pandas capability. We will uh, leverage. So, everyone, just take a minute and let me know if everything was clear in NumPy first. If there is anything which you are not clear, I have used the basic function which I have taught you. Nothing more complex. Let me know if anything is not clear, and I will explain. Take a minute here and let me know if everything is clear.
<laughs> Great. So if no doubts are there, let us move forward. Uh, let me know in the chat or uh, comments when this video is live. If any doubt is there, and I will help you to clear that. Okay. So the next thing is doing the same thing, but this time we will be using your uh, this thing. This time we are using pandas. So just reading the data directly. Okay, that is very straightforward. Then data processing. So we are this time filling the NA, but we are using your directly uh, this thing this time, your pandas libraries. Okay, there's a fill NA function in pandas. Okay, so see pandas fill NA. So there are multiple ways to do things, just that you should be aware of all the things because tomorrow it can happen that someone is using your numpy arrays. But let's say you are aware of Panda. So I've shown the same thing, how it can be done via multiple of these uh, ways. Okay, everyone. <laughs> then similarly, same way we can map these things. Okay. Embark. Yes or no. Then <clears throat> we can see the data. Then data analysis, survival rate, Titanic, then mean directly. Now no need of converting this into a NumPy array. Okay. Survival rate is there. Then average age. Okay, then fair statistics. So describe. So if you remember, describe was a very useful function. Yes or no, everyone? So see, it has got everything for us. So median, we have the median. We have the mean. Okay, so if you remember in the NumPy when I calculated the median, right? See here, everyone. In the NumPy one, I calculated this median, which was coming out to be 14.4542. Yes or no, everyone? So here... Pandas give us a describe function which can tell us all these things for a numerical variable. So count, mean, standard deviation, mean, uh, minimum, 25, 50, 75 percent, and max, all these things are there. Not data manipulation, selected data. Okay, selected data dot head. We can do this as well. Selected data dot describe. See, all these data, we are getting all the information. And then there are some visualizations. So survival count. Okay, very basic uh, visualization with pandas also give us. So we can plot this thing. Okay. So I think it is better if we just plot them in a different sense because you will be able to see this then. But normally it is suggested that matplotlib is the library or some other specific library we use for these things. We have, we do have this plot functionalities in pandas as well. So we can do pandas plot. See. So make plots of series or data frame. Okay. Uses the backend specified by the option plotting dot backend. By default, matplotlib is used. So it is also using matplotlib in uh, the backend. Okay. We can change this to use other libraries as well. Then data. Okay. What, how we are plotting. Then access, you will see matplotlib access object. Subplots. So things are, I would say, almost the same. It is using matplotlib in the background. But normally, I would suggest that because now you're aware of your matplotlib thing, you should directly use that. Okay, everyone. For some very basic things, you can use that, use this. But overall, I would suggest because matplotlib is, you have learned the syntax of matplotlib and it is much more powerful than your inbuilt pandas thing where lots of functionality you will see are not provided. Okay, like these are the only kind of graphs which we can use. So that's why it is using matplotlib in the backend, but you should make sure that you are using uh, matplotlib directly. So X label, Y label, this is all the legends which we title. Then bins, how many bins should be there? Kind should be histogram. Okay, everyone. So this is how you can create graphs using your matplotlib as well. Uh, sorry, your pandas as well. But I normally suggest and I also use matplotlib in all of my uh, case studies working everywhere. This I just wanted to show you that visualization capabilities are also provided in pandas. And this I wanted to show you after explaining you matplotlib. The reason is that because in the backend, matplotlib is being used. So now because we have done this uh, overall basic idea about matplotlib, so this thing should be a lot clear to you. Earlier, if I, I would have told you this in the, let's say day before yesterday in the pandas class, uh, sorry, yesterday in the pandas class, then I think it would have been a lot uh, difficult to get. So I hope everyone, this thing is clear as well. Can I get a confirmation in the chat if everything is clear now? So let me know if anything is not clear. Uh, we'll try to explain it again. Uh, 
So taking a minute, just to understand the code once. People who will be seeing this after the recording is done, they should also be able to understand everything. Okay. So describe function is there, which can give us lots of information. Then we can do data manipulation, selecting of these multiple columns. This we have already done in our previous class. Yes or no, everyone? So this two we have already done in our class. Uh, one second, everyone. <laughs> so visualization is the main thing which I wanted to show you. So let me write it here. Thing which I have told. Pandas can also create basic visualization for our use case in regarding data frames. It, it uses matplotlib by default in backend, which can be changed, but it is normally advised to use matplotlib directly. Okay, everyone, so I hope this is clear. So I added this as well so that your learnings are very smooth. We can create multiple of these graphs, then dot plot directly is used. Of course, this is easy as well. So wherever you think that very basic kind of analysis is required, feel free to use it. Else you know that now we have the other thing as well. Okay. Uh, let us move to the today's libraries and uh, work which we have learned today. So today we have learned about matplotlib. So the case study, we will explore the data using matplotlib library now, everyone. Okay, let me cover those other things. So data consists of multiple columns, which we are now aware. The wife, P class, name, sex, age, okay, sibling and spouse, parch, ticket, fair. Embarked are going to create inside put visualization. Now you will understand the overall, I would say, power of matplotlib. So I explained you and I cleared your doubts using basic graphs. I told you that, okay, how graphs are created, but now how insights are also got. That is something which you will understand now, everyone. Okay, so we got the data. Data be processing normal. Okay, this now we can use using either uh, pandas or numpy. That should be fine. And then now see the visualization. Plot. Let's create various plot to get insight from data using this thing. So see. Survival rate. Okay, so plots where a larger number of people did not survive the curve compared to those who survived. And we also have an idea as well. Like around, let's say, 550 uh, people did not survive. But around 330 or 40 people survived. Now, just by creating this graph directly, anyone, even anyone who doesn't have an idea about like what overall your uh, this thing is, uh, the data set is, he is also able to make sense of it. Yes or no, everyone? So we have added all these things which we have learned. See how the it is created. Okay. So plot dot figure. Then Titanic data survived. We are using value counts. So let me show you what value count is. Uh, my bad. Okay. One second. Uh, okay, I think let's copy it. Great. So let me run it here. This is I think I have to run it again. So something like uh, it happens in like Not really sure how to fix this. Uh, so let me change this. Yeah, so it's sometime it happened that uh, so I could refresh it. No worries. So here we are. Okay, everyone. So we got the data of P processing and then see. So I was showing you what value point means. So see. This is just tell you this data. So 0, 549, 1, 42. Okay. But by using the graph, we have an overall idea that okay, what this data is saying. Survival count, count survived, all these data. What is exactly saying? We are plotting this kind bar color using sky blue and salmon. So this kind of in uh, I would say overall things we can also add. This we can make maybe red to show that okay this is us, or we can make this red to show that okay this is the danger one to stand out. Okay, everyone. Then if we go forward, okay, plot. Okay, I think index zero is out of bound with size zero. Let me just quickly see. 
survive dot mean uh, I think this data state this thing survived. So we are grouping by on this thing. Just one second, everyone. Let me try to quickly fix this. Let's see why this error I'm getting. So normally, most probably this would be because of I have used uh, some other version of this thing. Okay. I think I should close this one. Let me give this error always. So just let me quickly change this thing. Uh, okay, so I think I have more than two categories of missing values are there. Uh, should be fine. Uh, let us move forward. Let me try to create another graph. So let us do one thing here. Let us copy this one. And to get this, okay. So say uh, for this particular thing, actually, it is showing that the data may be not right. So I think we have some missing data. So everyone, I think uh, the issue is that I brought this using the train uh, one which we downloaded from Kegel. Here, I think this is having some issue. So we'll check that. Should be fine. Okay. Let us move forward with this. Meanwhile. Just a minute, everyone. So let me try to fix this. Meanwhile, let us move forward. Uh, so that I will fix, will be fine. So this is survivor led by passenger class. So you will be seeing that first class passenger. Okay, those who created the maximum of, I would say, or uh, this thing, they were able to survive the highest. Okay, they were able to survive the highest, which kind of just shows you that, okay, how there was a disparity, like richer people were able to survive the, class, uh, survive the incident, whereas, your other people, uh, basically, let's say from those who are from the lowest class, they had the most issue in surviving. Okay, and we can do one more thing as well here. So we had this value counts uh, thing, right? So let us copy this and see that, okay, how many people were there in each class? So let us get this B class. So see, there were maximum people who were in, in this thing, but the survival rate is lowest. Okay, something I think which we saw unfortunately in the movie as well that how people who were from richer background they were able to just survive the incident so this is which i think i have to make it uh, okay i understood what is happening here i think i have not changed this earlier so the six is overall not map properly okay i understood this thing once again everyone just a second so male female let us keep it like this. Let us not change the sex column. So now we are getting it. And if this is male versus if this is female. Okay, no, one second. It is just female. Okay, so there we are getting this thing, age distribution. And what is the age distribution overall by uh, your gender? Now let us move forward. Survival rate by passenger class. Okay, so I've shown you that in the third class, passenger were the highest, but the survival rate for lowest for them. Okay, now 
let us see that okay what was the age distribution overall we here we have the age distribution by gender as well so let us copy this now see this is the overall age distribution and for every graph which you're drawing everyone you have to make sure that you're getting the inference from that as this as well so the plot shows the majority of passengers were between ages of 20 and 40. yes or no everyone so from 20 and 40 majority of people were now if we see the age with respect to the female and male we will see that okay majority were basically from around i would say 28 to 30 okay and it almost seems to be equivalent like there were a few more infants like who were male but overall that is the case so the plot shows the majority of passengers between ages of 20 to 40 which is the right inference here then if we move forward the plot suggests that many majority of the passengers were lower fares for their tickets see and this was also i would say clear when we saw this thing now if we were doing titanic data dot describe everyone now see here if we go on the fair you will see that the mean is 32 okay minimum zero till 75 percent 31 is there but maximum is 512 dollars okay everyone so this shows that majority of the people they have paid lower fare for their use case for their ticket okay and that was also the reason that the mean and median disparity was so high so whereas the fair median fare was 14, the mean fare was 32. Okay, because there were many outliers. So I hope you all are aware that because of these outliers, your mean and median can actually affect. Okay. So everyone, I hope this thing is clear as well. Can I get a yes or no? So there is another quick graph which we can make to see this. So let us see box not in mat.lib. Okay, so we can make box plot as well. Box plot shows us the outliers as well. So just we have this PLT. So let me try to make this PLT dot box plot and see how many outliers are there, everyone. Yes or no? So we can do PLT dot show to just remove all the other things. See everyone. So all this is just telling you all the information about your uh, basically fares. So see now what is the overall benefit if we are using these things. Yes or no, everyone? I hope you are able to appreciate the same, everyone. That how what is the overall benefits if we are using this thing? Tell me, everyone, if this thing is clear or not, and are we good to move forward? If anyone has any doubt, let me know. Anyone has any doubt, let me know. If you are good to move forward, just give me a yes or thumbs up. Next, we will be studying about SkyKit and library. Okay. As well as we will be uh, learning about your this thing. How to do the user SkyKit learn to do the final apply machine learning algorithm. So till now, what, what all we were doing that comes in data science. Okay, where we are making sense of data, doing EDA, okay, making sure that okay, what data is telling to us. Okay, the, all those and here you have seen that matplotlib is very very useful then the next part comes where we will actually be applying machine learning to our models okay everyone so please uh, just let me know if anything is not clear if anyone has any doubt let me know so we will actually jump to the last of this thing so I could learn just give me a minute yeah so I could learn we, I will first give you a very basic idea about like sky could learn on ILS data set then we will see this thing
Uh, hi everyone, I hope everything is clear now. The screen is also visible. So the audio is also clear. Uh, sorry, just there was a, uh, like the laptop, there was an issue with laptop. So yeah. So great, yeah. So I was actually now covering, uh, trying to cover on the SkyCrypton library. Okay, this is the last library which we have to cover. So let us first see the overall basic about the SkyCrypton library. So I've used the Iris dataset. Okay, this is kind of a hello world dataset for your, I would say, this thing in your Python. Okay, so this is also present on Kagan. We have just four columns here and we have to tell the species for that. Okay, everyone. So let us see quickly for that. So SkyCrypton is a powerful and versatile machine learning library. Okay, quite simple and efficient due for data mining, analysis, and machine learning tasks built on top of other popular libraries such as NumPy, SkyPy, Matplotlib. And that is how like NumPy basically is the base then num on top of NumPy, other libraries got made everyone. And this is how SkyQLearn came into being. Now SkyQLearn also known as SkyLearn. So Sky SkyLearn. Okay. See everyone. This is the basic idea. So classification, regression, clustering, these are the kind of a machine learning, uh, I would say, problems. Then model selection, dimensionality reduction, pre-processing, all these things are there. So we will just quickly see, okay, what are the overall benefits? Simple and consistent, then integration with other libraries, seamlessly integrated with other libraries, like NumPy, SkyPy, Matplotlib, allowing for easy data manipulation, visualization, and analysis, then extensive documentation. So there are documentation is actually one thing which is very good in your StackKit. I can show you this as well, everyone. Uh, let's say logistic regression. Now see everyone. For logistic regression, it has not just provided us with a function, but it has also gave us everything. Like it has explained everything with respect to maths, with respect to that, okay, what exactly is happening. So it has provided us with everything in this particular library. Okay. So now loading data set, SKLearn has some data set inbuilt in it. So we are using one of the data set, which is your iris. So data set load iris. Okay. We will get the feature name and all these things. So. Okay, let me just import. Okay, my bad. One second, everyone. Import numpy as np. Import. So these are all the things which you have to write anyway in front of, like I would say, most of your codes. So let me just. So these three libraries, as we saw in the first meme, they are very important. Okay, everyone. So feature names, these are the feature names, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width. Then these are the target names, setosa, versicolor, and virginica. Then number of samples and number of features. Okay, and then target classes are 0, 1, 2. Like, so the data set is actually in this form. I will tell you how the data set is everyone. So let's say if I take web paint tool, see everyone. So we have a flower. Okay, we are given its petal length and width. Similarly, we are given it sepal.
Uh, so one thing, everyone, just let me quickly uh, log in and uh, share screen again. So. So just one second, everyone. Well, let me know once my screen is visible. for this okay great now everyone i uh, extremely sorry for this so some like no, not really sure the laptop is hanging actually so i think yeah, we should be good to begin now so yeah i was telling you about this thing that we have this library with us uh, which we can use so data processing actually we can also do so there is a taint test split which we do using your library so let's say if we have this kind of a data we choose 80 percent to train our model and then just 20%, like this is the very basic machine learning uh, methodology, okay, which we have also covered in the machine learning community class. So let's say using this, now you will see that uh, point, I think, uh, so we have taken test size as 0.3. This means 70%, okay, of my 150. So 105 I have taken as a train, training data sets, training size, okay, everyone. Then model selection, so there are lots of models. So we are just using one of the models, which is logistic regression here. Okay, it is your overall, I would say, a model through which you can uh, use logistic regression. It is a very basic classification algorithm. Now, similarly, we can just use model predict and we can just get the accuracy. So these are all the steps which are there in your, I would say, SkyKit learn library. Now let us go in the case study as well. So case study, everything is same. So Titanic, we are getting the data. We will be working on this data. Okay, everyone. Now data pre-processing. So we will be filling the NA. Okay. With the median embark, we will be filling with this. 
then converting this data into male female all these things so see here you will see sex and male female everything is basically changed the way we want then feature engineering so x scale learn p processing we got standard scalar okay then standard scalar so scalar i hope you all are aware of this thing so we use this scaling techniques everyone so this i have covered in my ml community class oh sorry data science community class what is scaling what is normalization so by default sk learn give us all these ability to which we can directly use these uh, features okay everyone so sk learn by default give me all these uh, i would say functionalities through which i can directly use these features now you will see that i have got my this feature in jitring here standard scalar scalar fit dot transform okay so let me do this thing now model selection here you will see that i have done multiple models selection okay so model selection linear model tree then ensemble svm so here i've done used five models but all of them are available in, available in sklearn directly so import uh, from sklearn i am importing this model directly and here i have train test fit them 0.2 test fit basically which i have taken okay so you can see this function to train test fit how we can learn more about this function sklearn Yes or no, everyone? So see. So train test split. Okay, array test size by default it is taking 0.25. Okay, we can tell that okay how much should be the test size. Now if we go back, we have defined most like our algorithms in this way. See logistic regression. Okay, we have created dictionary for them. Decision tree, random forest like this. So now it is applying all these models one by one. So let me show you what models are here. see everyone so models okay so we have actually added your models added your models in a particular uh, dictionary and we will be applying them one by one and this for loops this for loop let us explain this as well see for name and model in model dot items okay score is equals to cross fail score so model x train x and y train so we are just training our model and just basically uh, then applying that what is the final score i am getting okay everyone so see this is what the accuracy i am getting so here seems that svm is performing the best with 82% of accuracy okay and there is then the next thing which is hyper parameter tuning so if you are aware we have to provide a lot of hyper parameter to our models yes or no everyone so there are lots of hyper parameters so for example one second so let's say if this is our model normally uh, for decision tree let's say or oh, sorry for random forest so one of the model is random forest okay there is a hyper parameter how many trees we want how much pruning we want to do so one thing is you can try to do it randomly that you are selecting some number and taking that okay for 100 you are getting this accuracy for 200 you are getting this accuracy the second thing is what we do in sklearn we have these libraries which give us this benefit okay which give us this benefit where let's say we select area by area like let's say first this area we select then we will see that okay what are the accuracy we are getting and moving forward we will keep on decreasing our area to get the best overall i would say your uh, this parameter which will give us the best output okay everyone i hope everyone this thing is clear i hope everyone this thing is clear can you let me know So I will repeat what all I am saying. So we have multiple of these uh, variables, okay, which we have used. Uh, sorry, multiple of these models which we have applied. Okay, you can see that there are the four models which I have selected here. Now, if you will go in SQL and model selections, uh, there are the basic libraries which we use, and then we have multiple of these things. Okay, everyone.
Can you raise my voice clear? Am I audible? Uh, thanks, Anurag. So let us just move forward then. Uh, then this is actually the way we do the cross validation. So, sorry, in the hypermeter tuning. So, n estimators, okay, then max depth. So, max depth is also another of the, I would say, your uh, feature which you add to this. Then, sample split, sample leaf. So, for random forest, I'm doing this grid search, okay. So, for multiple of these algorithms, you can use these things. Now, for similarly here, I'm using the same for random forest. Okay, everyone. So you will see the RF classifier random forest. Grid search. It's a grid search CV is a function. I'm passing the classifier. Okay. I'm passing the grid for my parameters. Then cross validation score, verbose, and number of jobs minus one basically to use all the codes. And grid search. Now we are fitting this thing on a train and test. Okay, everyone. So see. Fitting five folds of each 81 cannon total 0.405 fits. So we could have ideally done 405 models, but here this Skyky done is helping us to run so many models and give us the best uh, overall basically parameters. Okay, so it will take a little bit time, let it run. So see, best parameter max depth is equal to 10, minimum sample leaf 2, minimum sample speed 10, and number of estimators 300. And accuracy now you will see. see Earlier when we passed it without any, with the basics, I would say parameters, we got the accuracy to be 81 something. But now we are able to increase our accuracy. 82, this thing. So let us do model, uh, basically accuracy on the overall best, overall the data. So best random forest classified dot score, X test, Y test. And we got this score. There was one more thing. So you can save your model as well. You will see here. So. There is the way that you can save your model. So you, we can basically use it further. So let's say import joblib. Joblib.dump, we, our model is actually just best RF classifier. Best RF classifier, Titanic RF model. Okay. So see everyone, I think, yeah, you got your model here. So it's a pickle file, PKL. It's the pickle file, which we got, which we can then use. Okay, everyone. So this is how the basics about SkyQLearn and how is it used. So I will provide you with all these files. Uh, they are very comprehensively made. Like I spent a lot of time to create them to make sure that they are in line with, with what all have been taught to you. Okay. So I expect that each and every one of you will go through these files. Okay. So make sure that you are kind of learning everything here. I will make sure that I'm providing all of these things to you directly. Okay. So I will make sure that this resource is provided to you so that you can learn them at your own. And make sure that if anything is not clear, please reach out to me. So my email ID, you all, I think have my email ID. I will just share this again. So my email ID is, oh, one second. Mayank at the rate ineuron dot AI. Okay, so this is my email ID, everyone. So please feel free to reach out to me or comment if anything is there. I will make sure that uh, all the resources are available to you and you are able to study from them in your time. Okay, if anyone has any doubt, let me know. Uh, extremely sorry for the issues which we face. Like, seems like my laptop is actually giving some issues. So we'll get that checked at the service center. So normally with Mac, you don't face such issues. But uh, like from the recent, I think last week, I'm facing some issues with that. So we'll get that checked. Okay, everyone. Uh, so let me wait, wait a couple of minutes. If any doubts are there, uh, let me know. If no doubts are there, then I will close this team and we should be good. Uh, please, a humble request, make sure that you are able to go through each and every of these uh, notebooks which I am providing to you so that everything is uh, like properly crystal clear to each and every one of you. Okay, everyone? Uh, Harshal, I just used random for us to showcase that uh, this thing so you can use svm as well i just wanted to showcase see here herschel so my aim here was to just explain you on this thing so skykit run so see herschel 
you can use SVM as well. I just wanted to showcase you this parameter, uh, this grid thing on one of the algorithms. So I choose random forest because that is normally easier to understand that number of estimators, number of trees, how many there are, then minimum samples leaf, minimum sample split that, okay, how many splits are there? So that's why I've chosen random forest. No, as such here, my aim in this case study majorly Herschel was to explain you that how this grid search or hyperparameter tuning is done. Okay. It is not with respect to, let's say, uh, choosing the best thing or that, uh, that I've already done in your, uh, the data science project, which I took the last master class, the last class. So that's why I have chosen just random forest here. You can choose multiple algorithms as well. Okay. So we can define grid search thing for that thing and we can use that. Okay. Anyone, any other doubt, which I can help you with. Any other doubt, which is not clear? Uh, great then everyone, I will just uh, share all these files with you all. Okay, so we'll be sharing these files. Uh, make sure that you go through them, make sure that you understand them. And if any doubt is there, please feel free to reach out to me. Okay, so this is my email ID, myankadzari.ai. Please feel free to reach out to me and I will help you uh, in the best way. Okay. Great. Thanks a lot, everyone. So we'll be closing the stream. Uh, one second. I think okay, I have multiple of them because I'm getting the audio from somewhere else. But yeah. Okay. Great, everyone. So thanks a lot for your time. We'll let him close this.